Arakara, also known as Sarnish, Arakari, Ri, or Hundi, are a tribe of Native Americans in North Dakota. Today, they are enrolled with the Mandan and the Hadatsa as the federally recognized tribe known as the Mandan, Hadatsa, and Arakara Nation. The Arakara's name is believed to mean horns, in reference to the ancient custom of wearing two upright bones in their hair. The name also could mean elk people or cornitas. The Arakara lived as a semi-nomadic people on the Great Plains. During the sedentary seasons, the Arakara lived primarily in villages of earth lodges. While traveling or during the seasonal bison hunts, they erected portable teepees as temporary shelter. They were primarily an agricultural society, whose women cultivated varieties of corn or maize. The crop was such an important staple of their society that it was referred to as mother corn. An early European, a botanist, praised the Arakara women as excellent cultivators. He had not seen finer crops anywhere in America. The surplus corn and other crops, along with tobacco, were traded to the Lakota, the Cheyenne and more Southern Plains tribes during short-lived truces. The amount of trading items passing through the Arakara villages made them a trading center on the Upper Missouri. Before smallpox epidemics hit the three village tribes, they were the most influential and affluent peoples in the Northern Plains. Traditionally an Arakara family owned 30 to 40 dogs. The people used them for hunting and as sentries, but most importantly for transportation in the centuries before the Plains tribes adopted the use of horses in the 1600s. Many of the Plains tribes had used the travois, a lightweight transportation device pulled by dogs. It consisted of two long poles attached by a harness at the dog's shoulders. With the butt ends dragging behind the animal, midway, a ladder-like frame, or a hoop made of plaited thongs, was stretched between the poles, it held loads that might exceed 60 pounds. Women also used dogs to pull travois to haul firewood or infants. The travois were used to carry meat harvested during the seasonal hunts, a single dog could pull a quarter of a bison. The Arakara played a central role in the Great Plains Indian trading networks based on an advantageous geographical position combined with a surplus from agriculture and craft. Historical sources show that the Arakara villages were visited by Cree, Assiniboine, Crow, Cheyenne, Arapaho, Sioux, Kiowa, Plains, Apache and Comanche. The Arakara creation myth shows similarities with the creation myth of the neighboring Mandan people. It begins with the great sky chief Nishinu creating giants. The giants did not respect Nishinu who had created them and most of the giants were destroyed by a great flood. The good giants who were saved became corn kernels under the earth. Nishinu planted corn in the heavens yielding mother corn who went to the earth to lead the people out of the east into the west, but after a time she returned to heaven and in her absence the people of the earth began to kill one another. She returned to the earth with a leader who taught them how to fight their enemies rather than one another. This is an emergence style creation myth depicting the corn mother as giving birth to the planted seeds, the remaining good giants after the flood. The figure of the corn mother can be found in many Native American mythologies. The myth is said to reflect the migrations of the Arakara from east to west. In the late 18th century, the tribe suffered a high rate of fatalities from smallpox epidemics, which reduced their population from an estimated 30,000 to 6,000, disrupting their social structure. The smallpox epidemic of 1780-1782 reduced the Arakara villages along the Missouri from 32 to 2. The effects of the epidemic may have been so terrible that it could not be comprehended but in allegorical form. All-out war hit the weakened and often divided Arakara. In a burned-down village later studied as Larson site, archaeologists found the mutilated skeletons of 71 men, women and children, 
killed in the early 1780s by unknown Native American attackers. Groups of Sioux were the ones who gained most by the weakening of the Arakara. They attacked the vulnerable Arakara and increased the pace of Sioux expansion west of the Missouri. The Arakara faced many challenges during the first quarter of the 19th century. Reduced numbers, competition from white traders, and military pressure from the Lakota and other groups of Sioux. Alliances shifted constantly. The Arakara joined old foes the Sioux in raids on Mandan and Hadatsa Indians. Later they negotiated for peace with both village tribes. Due to their reduced numbers, the Arakara started to live closer to the Mandan and Hadatsa in the same area for mutual protection. They migrated gradually from present-day Nebraska and South Dakota into North Dakota. The remainder of the group was encountered in 1804 by the Lewis and Clark expedition. The first Arakara delegation left for the capital, Washington, D.C., in April 1805, urged by the Lewis and Clark expedition. Chief Ankaducharo became ill during his stay and died in Washington. The delegates blamed the whites for the chief's death. That was one reason why the Arakara for the next decades were notoriously hostile to white Americans. On June 2, 1823, the Arakara attacked a group of 70 trappers led by William Henry Ashley of the Henry Ashley Company. The trappers were camped near an Arakara village at the mouth of Grand River, north of present-day Mobridge, South Dakota. Fourteen trappers died and ten were wounded, including Hugh Glass, memorialized in the 1954 biographical novel Lord Grizzly by Frederick Manfred, the 2002 historical fiction novel The Revenant, a novel of revenge by Michael Punk, and the 2015 film The Revenant, an adaptation of Punker's book. Colonel Henry Leavenworth left Fort Atkinson, now in Nebraska, with 220 men. More than 700 Yankton, Yankton I and Lakota Indians joined him in the United States' First Indian War west of the Missouri. The Arakara retreated to their fortified village. Soon the disappointed Sioux left the battlefield. The Arakara escaped at night, and angry fur traders set their empty lodges ablaze the next morning. This was the only time in history that any of the three tribes fought in open warfare against the United States. The Bloody Hand and other Arakara chiefs signed a peace treaty with the United States on July 18, 1825. In the winter, spring of 1833 members of the Arakara tribe ambushed Hugh Glass, Helene Menard and Colin Rose. A handwritten notation made on the credit side of Menard's account book page states, killed by the Reese near Fort Cass Spring 1833, Landry wrote in his article. The word, Reese, was mountaineer slang for the Arakara tribe. According to a letter written by John F. A. Sanford, an Indian agent, in a July 1833 letter to William Clark, Superintendent of Indian Affairs. Landry includes the excerpt in his article, they scalped them and left part of the scalps of each tied to poles on the grounds of the murder. Years of indecision followed. The rootless Arakara lived near their southern, kinfolk, the Skiddy Pawnee, for some years. They also tried their luck in hostile country far up on the Platnow, Nebraska, where Colonel Henry Dodge met them in 1835, harassed by the numerous Sioux, the Arakara finally buried old enmity and befriended the Mandan and the Hadatsa in the late 1830s. The manager in the trading post Fort Clark observed in June 1838, how, the Reese, Mandans and Groventers, Hadatsas, started out early, in a common bison hunt. Smallpox had struck the upper Missouri tribes the year before, and would again in 1856. It decimated the Mandan. The surviving Arakara took over the almost empty Mandan village Matutanka next to Fort Clark. The earth lodges stood until Yankton Sioux set them on fire in January 1839. The village was rebuilt by the Arakara, who lived there until 1861. Another Sioux attack, 
and the need for a trading post, made them leave the settlement for good. The goal of the United States in the Laramie Treaty of 1851 was to establish a permanent peace on most of the Northern Plains and to define tribal territories. The basic treaty area of the Arakara. The Hadatsa and the Mandan was a mutual territory north of Hart River, encircled on the east and north by the Missouri and on the west by Yellowstone River down to the mouth of Powder River. The Lakota had continued to press north after 1823, so they got treaty rights on the area along Grand River as well as other land south of Hart River. Peace was short-lived. As drawings collected by W. J. Hoffman of Hunpapa Chief Running Antelope showed, in 1853 he already had killed four Arakara Indians. The next year the three tribes called for the U.S. Army to intervene, that request was repeated the next two decades. Arakara hunters were waylaid and had difficulties securing enough game and hides. A lengthy battle between an Arakara camp on Hunt and several hundred Lakota took place in June 1858. The Arakara camp lost 10 men, with 34 wounded. The Arakara built Star Village in the spring of 1862. They had to abandon it after a fierce fight with the Sioux a few months later. The Arakara crossed the Missouri and built new earth lodges and log houses near the common Mandan and Hadatsa village like a fishhook village. The village was built outside the three tribes treaty area. We, the Arakara, have been driven from our country on the other side of the Missouri River by the Sioux, declared Chief White Shield in 1864. Like a fishhook village was not safe from devastation, strikes or raids for horses, and neither was the nearby trading post Fort Berthold II. Just before the end of 1862, some Sioux burned a part of the village. The affiliation of the Sioux is not always clear. Lakota, Yankton Island, refugee, Santi Sioux from the Minnesota uprising sometimes attacked the three tribes. As always in intertribal warfare, there were interludes with peace, and conflicts with other Indian foes, as for example the Assiniboine. In 1869, the three tribes asked the United States for guns as protection against hostile Sioux, and they finally received 300 pieces. The three tribes sold a part of their southern treaty land, more or less already annexed by the Lakota, to the United States on April 12, 1870. At the same time, they got treaty on the area where like a fishhook village was located. In June 1874, Colonel George Armstrong Custer in Fort Abraham Lincoln now North Dakota, received an order to delay his Black Hills expedition and stop a large war party of Lakota on its way to attack like a fishhook village. The recent Mandans should be protected same as white settlers, read the order from General Phil Sheridan. Custer failed and the Lakota killed five Arakara and one Mandan. During the Great Sioux War of 1876, some Arakara served as scouts for Custer in the Little Bighorn campaign. The Arakara supplied some of the most faithful and effective Indian scouts for the army during the war against the bands of Lakota roaming other people's territories in 1876-1877. For tribes subject to Sioux pressure for decades, the combination of revenge and self-defense would constitute a powerful motivation for joining the whites in actions like that. Custer's favorite scout, an Arakara known as Bloody Knife, fell during the Battle of the Little Bighorn in the Crow Indian Reservation, now Montana, in 1876. Mandans, Arakaris and Gros Venters, were among the first Indian children to arrive at Hampton Institute, a historically black college, in Virginia for schooling, in 1878. The Fort Berthold Indian Reservation got a new shape and size by agreement in 1886, ratified in 1891. In 1910, the three tribes gave their consent to sale of land, so the reservation was reduced once more. The Arakara drifted away from like a fishhook village. They raised and branded cattle instead of hunting buffalo. With the Dawes Act and allotment in severalty, 
passed as another attempt at assimilation to European-American culture. Each Arakara family was allotted a homestead of 160 acres in the early 1890s. The Arakara Indians were considered citizens of the United States, and no more tribal village dwellers. The three tribes are settled on the Fort Berthold Indian Reservation in North Dakota, 